Well, I got one of those comments on my channel that has numbered questions and was more than I wanted to type, although I think I did give very brief answers to this. I thought it might uh, warrant a little longer answer. So I'm reading this off of my computer screen over here. Hi, I stumbled on your videos. Great find. Well, thank you very much. In light of the situation that exists in the USA, my hubby and I have been considering the other options if we make the decision to relocate elsewhere. We live in Florida, both living on Social Security and a small pension and having a difficult time making ends meet. I will Google for more information, but perhaps you can answer some questions that I can't get from Google. Number one, do you ever regret your decision to live in Mexico? Short answer, absolutely not. There are some things in the United States that I miss. Um, one of them is roads without topis. Topis are speed bumps. I counted the speed bumps between my house and Hokotepec. My house is in Ahihik. It's like uh, 12 kilometers, which is around 7 miles. There are 23 speed bumps in those 7 miles between Hokotepec and my house. 23 speed bumps. I miss streets without speed bumps. People ask me, what do you miss uh, when you're in the USA from Mexico? Well, there are two things. One of them is Mexican Coke, which is made with um, real sugar, cane sugar, instead of corn syrup. And the other one I always uh, love to answer is, because I'm living in a motorhome, I miss uh, two-ply toilet paper. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, was it difficult for you and your wife to get used to the money system, learning the language, and driving laws? After 18 years, I still have to think uh, when I'm counting pesos, or when I'm listening to how much, how many pesos somebody is asking me for. <clears throat> um, certainly, I'm um, uh, not having a problem with it, but it does take some time to learn how to intuitively understand a different money system. Uh, learn the language? Well, I've never taken a Spanish lesson, and all of the uh, Spanish that I understand and can speak, I learned just working with my Spanish friends and, and uh, workers. So, uh, learning the language hasn't been a problem, because I haven't. <laughs> I know enough Spanish to get through a hardware store. I'm pretty good at the hardware store. A gas station, certainly. A restaurant, certainly. But I'm not uh, having a philosophical conversation with anyone. And, of course, we act out the verbs. So if you can play charades, you can get along. <laughs> uh, driving laws. The laws aren't really that much different. Um, the habits are a little different. And it takes some getting used to if you're an uptight driver, if you're pretty much uh, go with the flow and don't suffer from road rage a lot, you'll be just fine driving in Mexico. Are Americans really welcomed there and accepted by locals? Absolutely yes. When the uh, 2016 USA election was going on and there was all this talk about a wall and uh, bad things being said about Mexico and Mexicans, the local government in Chapala uh, called a meeting in the town square and invited all of the expats and foreigners. And the message they delivered was, we don't care what goes on north of the border. You are an important part of the community and welcome here and always will be. That's a meeting that the public officials in Chapala held because we were wondering, you know, well, hey, if things get... Um, worse between the United States and Mexico, is it going to affect us as foreigners living in Mexico? And the official word from the mayor and the chief of police and a number of uh, other uh, officials was, absolutely not. We like you, we appreciate you, you're welcome here, and you always will be. That was the message at a public meeting. 
So the answer to that question is uh, yes, we are welcome and accepted. Uh, did you have to give up your U.S. citizenship? No. Uh, we are U.S. citizens and we are legal residents of Mexico. Um, it's kind of difficult to give up your U.S. citizenship because the IRS will follow you as a U.S. citizen everywhere you go in the world. No, you don't have to give up your U.S. citizenship to live in Mexico. Um, Oh, if you're able to answer these questions for me, I'd much appreciate it. Well, I just wanted to answer them that Good way. Good morning, friends. It's a moving day. We're going to move from near where my daughter lives over to near where my son lives. And we're going to dump our tanks along the way. Oh, I'm sure that's something you want to see, right? <laughs> Let's go. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. My daughter lives in Hillsboro, Oregon, and my son lives in Sherwood, Oregon. So we're going to take the back roads from one place to the other, and it's a scenic drive. There's pumpkins in the pumpkin patch. Lots of pumpkins in the pumpkin patch. Any frogs on them? Well, I stopped here to take a picture of Mount Hood, but it's way too hazy. Now I'm just messing around with the new camera and the zoom. That's Mount Hood in Oregon. Uh, I'm thinking it's probably 50 miles away, air miles. So when I dump, I tip the motorhome with my air leveling system in order that the holding tanks get fully empty. It works really well. See how the whole coach is tipped towards the drain? So this is Lowell, and Lowell was gracious enough to let us park at his property because yeah. the RV park near my son closed. So thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. and hey, good luck elk hunting. Oh, thank you. You do have a license, right? Oh, yes. This might be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no. is, is that yes, I do. <laughs> Is that okay? I'm legal, yes. We don't call it a license, they call it a tag, don't they? Well, I haven't got the tag yet, but I do have the license. You need the license first, and then the tag. Oh, okay. But you're going to do it right. Oh, yeah, I'm going to yeah, do it right. Because yeah, they'll, <laughs> yeah. they'll throw me out of the woods if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they'll throw you out of the woods? Yeah. Is that where you find elk? Uh, I don't know usually, anything about elk hunting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they like to be in the woods. Yeah? yeah? It's not like that. Well, I've been antelope hunting when I was a oh, kid. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine... Here's another story. That's the name of my YouTube channel is JC Travel Stories. Okay? Yeah, I, so here's the story. When I was in high school, what was his name? Wanless. Stanley Wanless, yeah. Hmm. Stanley, we're chasing antelope with the pickup, and Stanley's in the back and he roped one. The antelope stopped and it jerked him out of the pickup. He had it tied around his waist so the antelope wouldn't get away. That's a true story. That's a good one. Yeah. Do you believe it? Well, it sounds good, yeah. <laughs> well, but, but yeah. Mark Twain said, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks, buddy. Oh, you bet. You know Thank what? You. Uh -huh. uh, I might see you in a year. Would that be okay? Oh, sure. All right. Yeah. We'll see what next year brings. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Uh, thank you. Okay. For all you do-it-yourself RVers out there, you're probably wondering what's this sticky stuff on the bottom of my foot. Well, I'm putting solar panels up on the roof, and of course I stepped in the dicor. <laughs> uh, it might be time for a new pair of sandals. So, uh, I got a couple of questions about what's going on with my solar. I've had uh, 300 watts of solar plus the original. 100 watt panel that came with the motorhome and it's wired in to charge both the both the house batteries and the uh, coach battery I guess I said that wrong 
the house batteries and the engine battery. Uh, I'm disconnecting my uh, 300 watts, which is two 150 watt panels, from that system and using the old charge controller and the old 100 watt panel just to charge the engine battery. And then a separate system, and I've added two 150 watt panels, so I'll have a total of 600 watts running through a Victron MPPT um, 100 volt 50 amp charger. So uh, 600 watts, less if it's cloudy, maybe more if it's bright sun. So that's all matched up just fine, and I'm running it into four new uh, uh, AGM batteries. They are uh, Full River 250-6s. So I'm running the two um, panels in series to create 39 volts, and then the two sets of two running uh, in parallel. So what I'm running to the um, charger is theoretically about 40 volts at 16 amps. And the MPPT, of course, will reduce the voltage and increase the amperage. So I'm thinking I might be able to put uh, between 30 and 40 amps into my new batteries from those four panels. And if that doesn't get Lynn through the night watching TV and whatever else goes on, I'm going to add two more batteries and two more panels until I don't have to run the generator anymore. That there is the plan. It was not the plan to step in the guy die core up on the roof. So here's what it looks like up on my roof. That's my dish network dome, that black brown thing. My air horns. And as I turn around, those two solar panels, 150 watts each in series to produce 8 amps at 40 volts. That long one there is the old original one. Got to watch where I'm stepping in so I don't trip and fall off the roof. That's the old one that's going to charge just the engine battery. And the other two back here, also in series, are hooked in parallel with those two. Uh, I still have to put the um, Eternabond tape down to hold these wires down so that they don't flop in the wind. But I've got room for two more panels back there and probably two more up there if I wanted. So. I still got plenty of real estate up here for solar if this isn't doing the job. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.